flip that on its head a little bit and move on to our next target, which we have studied, uh, I think, since I was in elementary school. Um, so KRAS has been studied for quite a while. It is the most common driver alteration that we've seen in non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer. And yet, up until very recently, we had no targetable, uh, no targeted therapies for it. And the thought was that the natural ligand for KRAS has a picomolar affinity for its target. So you cannot make a drug that has a stronger affinity without having substantial toxicity and substantial impact in the rest of the body. Um, but within the last couple of years, we have seen multiple drugs that are targeting KRAS G12C. G12C creates a secondary pocket for a so-called allosteric inhibition. There are now two drugs uh, more than that, actually. There's two drugs that are far along in development, AMG 510 and MRTX 849. Um, now, these KRAS G12C mutations, it's the most common KRAS mutation seen in non-small cell lung cancer. It is also seen in other tumors, most notably colorectal cancer. What's interesting about AMG 510 and MRTX 849 was that they both yielded a response rate of about 50% in lung cancer. At least for AMG 510, no responses in colorectal cancer. That is really confusing to me, and maybe you guys will be able to explain it to me, and if so, I would really appreciate that. Um, in terms of the toxicity profile, both of these drugs are really well tolerated, no dose-limiting toxicities whatsoever with these drugs. Um, so this, to me, is really remarkable and a real advance, because as Dr. Naidu was saying before, we are checking KRAS on our multi-gene panels. It's coming back. Um, and historically, I used to say, okay, KRAS, I guess I'm not going to see something else. But now there's a real target and a real thing to look forward to. Um, how are you guys incorporating this into your practice? Clinical trials. I mean, that's what I have right now, and that's what I'm doing. So G12C, um, fantastic results. We're very happy. Um, and hopefully the, the clinical development of both programs that you mentioned uh, uh, will continue along those lines. And we'll see. We get more information. Uh, there are definitely a combination story, uh, 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 protocols that are coming with both compounds. So all of that is good. But now we actually have trials for G12D, G12F, every other category. So there are specific drugs that are being developed to address every single subtype. And I agree with you. I think uh, when you were in elementary school, I was probably in high school and KRS was being investigated. But it's interesting how there still is a little bit of a controversy, right? Because I remember specifically seeing data presented at ASCO where, suggested, where it was suggested that different KRAS subtypes have different responses to chemotherapy back then. We didn't even have IO back then, right? So we had this mindset that in the adjuvant setting versus metastatic setting, different KRAS subtypes might have different uh, responsiveness or resistance to cytotoxic chemo. All of a sudden, IO comes and everybody forgets about all of that because you can give IO to everybody. So chemo IO becomes the standard. And now we have these specific drugs that do show really good clinical uh, uh, activity. But I think what's missing right now is obviously beyond the fact that we need a bigger data set is uh, what's the duration of response? What's the median PFS? And is there CNS penetration? Not. I mean, all of these things are still are evolving. But personally, I'm very happy to see that we finally can address KRAS with these specific drugs. And I'm sure what we learn now is going to lead to better second, hopefully third generation drugs with better activity. But this is a really good, exciting start as far as I'm concerned. But definitely great excitement. I mean, KRAS is the second most common oncogenic abnormality being you know, besides P53 in a way. So if we're able to target it, we can make a huge, huge step forward in terms of managing our cancer patients. 95% of pancreatic cancers 20, 25% of lung cancers. Integrating that into diagnostic paradigms is not difficult. You know, it's part of your NGS, you'll get the results. Uh, and we all have to push the clinical studies, just like Hans mentioned, we have to complete this quickly. Uh, you know, these are very smartly designed compounds. You know, they, they, they take advantage of the very specific, specific chemistry of KRAS going from a GTP to a GDP band version. And in the GDP band version, a small pocket opens up that these molecules are able to covalently fix. So KRAS is unable to convert, convert back to the GTP band version, and it has to be uh, flipping back and forth for it to be active. 
and promoting the pathway. So very smartly designed, certainly a clear cut activity. The duration is a, is, is a question at the moment. So again, you know, combination strategies will, strategies will be important to, um, you know, uh, promote, but very, very exciting times for KRS targeting. Yeah, I think what I'd add to that as well is I really think lung cancer is where breast cancer was 10 or 15 years ago, that our understanding of the biology is just exploding. And if we recall, um, her two, um, her two positive breast cancer was the poor prognostic group until we had her two targeted therapies in breast cancer. And I'm wondering or hoping, obviously, I think as a thoracic oncologist, we're, we're all optimists by nature, um, that maybe KRAS is going to be that for our field, and maybe these are the agents to do that. I know anytime I see a patient with KRAS, you know, usually the first thing that comes to mind is this is the poor prognostic group, the group that has a poorer survival, but that's only because we don't have an agent or agents, and hopefully the tide is turning, and um, that's how I feel about the, this area. I, I think that's such a wonderful point, and I think that it really highlights how the field can change on a dime, and identifying these poor subgroup uh, patients and then trying to find new agents to help them. That is another thing that is happening not only in KRAS, but also in EGFR. 